Okay, so with the foot and ankle, let's move on to inflammatory lesions. And we'll talk about osteomyelitis, the diabetic foot, foreign bodies, systemic sclerosis, and some of the arthritis out there. So, Tayson, what do you think of this case? Look like we have a lot of uh, soft tissue surrounding that first, oh, that third um, metatarsal head with uh, cortical erosion. Okay. You worry about. Uh, yeah, that looks like we're maybe some missing some toe up there. And yeah. this is a patient with diabetic osteomyelitis and then uh, had a prior amputation, partial amputation. Okay, uh, Robert. All right, so now we're looking at the hind foot and there's a lot of edema in that calcaneus. Looks like there's an avulsion of that Achilles tendon with a small osseous fragment there. And yeah. uh, I mean, again, I'd be concerned for osteomyelitis. There's a lot of inflammatory change, and yeah, maybe so a fluid see, collection there. So you see a, exactly, and you see a lot of edema in the bone here. If this were just an avulsion fracture, you guys have seen a lot of avulsion fractures. <clears throat> you tend not to get this much diffuse edema. You could have hemorrhage where you have an avulsion fracture, uh, but here uh, we we can see that thus, there's also. On the T1-weighted images, this kind of characteristic appearance here that looks much more chronic than what you would see with an acute avulsion, if it were an acute bone avulsion. And this is someone who had chronic disease uh, with osteomyelitis, weakened the bone, and got a uh, traction injury in an area of uh, pre-existing osteomyelitis. Elior? All right, so here, looking at the lateral ankle, I see um, fluid in the soft tissues. Looks like an erosion in the lateral malleolus. Yeah, similarly here, I'd be concerned for osteo. Okay. And then here on the coronal images, we can see all this soft tissue edema and thickening here, marked subcutaneous thickening here. That erosive change, obviously edema within the, the uh, lateral malleolus. And again, this was uh, osteomyelitis with uh, uh, a lot of cellulitis associated with it. There's a defect in the skin also. Uh, is there a drainage or do we know? I don't remember, John, but my guess is it's likely that there was. Or, or a surgeon's drain. Well, I, I don't think there's anything surgical here at this point. Well, then what? It must be draining then. Yeah, I don't remember. That was a very old study. Please. All right. So diffuse uh, edema within the. Proximal first uh, metatars, oh, proximal first phalanx. Uh, Maybe I'll step down here. Okay, so this is 16, 1608. It's a patient, this was uh, shown to be osteomyelitis. Uh, <clears throat> and the coronal images, we can see the flexor tendons and so forth and muscles look pretty good at this time. Now the patient comes back on uh, 91708, so about three months later, and this is what it looks like. So they've had a amputation of the distal great toe. Yeah, it looks like an uh, amputation here. But then, yeah, a lot of edema in the first metatarsal head. And the second and third. Yeah. Some edema here, more proximally. And then what do you see on the soft tissues? Mm. Just tenus synovitis. Okay, so <clears throat> with, with these uh, patients, uh, especially this is a diabetic patient, and diabetic patients, the thing that you really have to look for 
is evidence of proximal spread of the infection. Because the classic thing with diabetes is that you'll do a distal amputation, but you won't get all the infection. And then you keep amputating until you run up all the way to the knee. <clears throat> and uh, so with MR, what you really need to do is see if there's any evidence of proximal positioning of the, uh, of the infection. <clears throat> and in this particular case, one of the things you really have to look carefully for uh, on MR is whether you have a possible uh, uh, in, infected effusion within the tendons. Because the tendon sheath is a very easy way for uh, infection to spread proximally in a silent way. So you can do a amputation, like a midfoot amputation, but if you already have infection that's tracked all the way up along the flexor hallucis longus tendon proximal to the ankle, and you don't detect that, then you're going to end up with uh, uh, incomplete uh, treatment of the patient. In this particular case, we can see fluid in that uh, tendon, oops, tendon sheath. Which if we One thing have, about there amputations, before. can I uh, yes. say something? It's just, Absolutely, John. Uh, one thing about amputations of the foot, you have to pick the right level uh, in terms of uh, the ability of a patient to walk thereafter. Right. And uh, these levels are uh, important uh, to know. And uh, the radiologist has to give the surgeon an idea of what level they're going to pick, uh, depending on where the infection has gone. So uh, it's, it's nice to know whether the infection is up the thigh or up to the calf or whatever. Uh, so probably uh, either either MRI or a CT scan or whatever you, you prefer to do. Um, you, you want to find out. And the foot, like you say, there's a metatarsal amputation, and then there's a chopard amputation, and there's a, uh, this Frank amputation, Symes amputation, etc. All of these are helpful for the patient if you can do as distal an amputation as possible without causing problems proximally. And then here we can see in 61608, there's no fluid around the flexor hallucis longus tendon. But now if we go to 9708, we can see that there's fluid there. And that's a worrisome sign. <clears throat> and that's something, so you have to look carefully at fluid within the tendon sheaths to follow that up. And then also proximal uh, evidence of osteomyelitis. Uh, you've got to go forward. And then in situations like this, if this is the last image, which we see here, then you'd have to say in your report that there is fluid tracking along the flexor hallucis longus tendon sheath, uh, which uh, is worrisome for proximal spread and recommend an MR scan of the ankle uh, to follow the full proximal extent of the, of the disease. So if I was a treating doctor, I would ask for an ankle MRI. Great, great. And then <clears throat> obviously it, there are possibilities where you could have more proximal infection <clears> that we could treat surgically distally and just make sure you treat effectively with antibiotics the more proximal osteomyelitis but it's more difficult if you had fluid collections or really abscesses going up along the tendon sheets to be able to treat them only medically in a diabetic patient and a normal patient that's a different story now, well, one thing about antibiotics if you have an abscess the antibiotics do not go to the into the abscess. Yeah. Uh, you can wall it off, but you cannot stop it. Yeah. So uh, you have to have surgical drainage of it. Uh, otherwise, um, you're, you're just whistling Dixie. Right. You did this one, right? Yeah. Okay, Robert, if you don't, this is the kind of situation you might see. Oh, yeah. So here, looking at the hindsight, there's a lot of destructive change and. Yeah, a lot of abnormality. I don't see much of a calcaneus or talus. Yeah, so th this is all abscess and phlegmon. If you give contrast, <clears throat> now, did you, were you going to say something, John? Mm, no, I wasn't, but there's something up, upstairs. Uh, 
Well, here, uh, going proximally, that bothers me. Yeah, right. So, uh, now there was a time when uh, people were very concerned about getting diabetics contrast. Uh, as you know, uh, diabetics, especially those who have uh, Charcot disease and are at risk for infections, tend to have poor renal uh, function. With modern day uh, gadolinium contrast, uh, I don't think you have to worry about renal function at all. In fact, I don't even recommend you, you even test for it. So that's not a contraindication to giving uh, to doing contrast uh, in these patients. I think ever, uh, as you know, I'm not a big fan of uh, IV contrast in the musculoskeletal system, but one area where it is helpful is in the diabetic patients if you're looking for abscesses, because as John said, antibiotics tend not to be very effective against treating these abscesses uh, because it's a safe area for the bacteria. So it's important to know this and actually establish good drainage before you can uh, have effective uh, chemical control of the, of the infection. And so this is a typical appearance that you'll see in an abscess where you'll have peripheral enhancement and centrally lack of enhancement where the uh, pus is located. So that's a typical diabetic foot. And we saw this before. Okay. Uh, here's just another example. Uh, the T1 weighted images where it looks like phlegmon. How much of this is abscess? How much of it's just uh, phlegmonous tissues? <clears throat> and then when you give contrast, you can clearly see that there's a huge amount of pus collection within the soft tissues here. Okay. Robert, what do you think of this? <clears throat> All right, here, so we have a 73-year-old male diabetic with six-month history of heel pain. Uh, here's a lot of edema in that posterior calcaneus, and it looks like there's a tear of that distal Achilles tendon as well. Right. And then what about all these little things? Yeah. Uh, has there been surgery? No. Good. If there have been surgery, these could be a little flex of metal, right? But this patient has not had surgery. Okay. Uh, hmm. Maybe um, 10 bacteria did the surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Here are the coronal images. Yes, yeah, similar. Images. There's a lot of edema. Okay, so there are two things if you haven't had surgery that you have to work yeah. out. One is... Is it an anaerobic infection? Sure. She has a typically has a worse prognosis than an aerobic infection. Is more of an emergency, uh, or is it is the this connected to the outside world? Is it draining? And in this particular case, this was draining to the outside world here. So this gas was probably coming in from the air. But mm -hmm. in situations like this, you have to be very worried that you're dealing with an anaerobic infection, uh, which may require even more aggressive management than a uh, standard infection. So this was an infected sinus tract. It's a very difficult area to deal with, and you have to split the calcaneus to get uh, the drainage uh, and drain it properly. Um, it, it's uh, very difficult to treat. Okay. Elior. Okay, so here... And this is an old case from the days when I was back in Santa Barbara. Mm. Mm, yeah, so I'm looking at the fourth uh, metatarsal right. Right diaphysis, so, maybe. So this, yeah. was, this was a, <clears throat> about a 65-year-old woman who was an avid gardener <clears throat> and uh, came in with... And I think I'll have the same, probably the same history with the next case or another case coming anyway, and came in with um, uh, pain in the foot. Uh, they thought there might be an infection, so they treated her with antibiotics. She got better, then she came back, and that happened a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Okay, so within the bone, it looks like there's this ringed, sort of uh, 
yeah, this ring increased signal lesion. Um, and yeah, and the muscle as well looks like there's, that there's looks like some fluid. More proximal, more proximal, most proximal. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, could, given this, oh, okay, foreign so body. So this is a foreign body. She had actually stepped, uh, you know, the, for those of you in Southern California, you've all seen <clears throat> when we get windstorms, the fawns from the uh, palm trees fall down, and they tend to have these about three inch long needles. And she stepped on one, and it kind of broke off, and that this was a uh, uh, prong, uh, a needle from a, from a palm tree that she had stepped on. And uh, they kept giving antibiotics, but uh, with a persistent foreign body, the bacteria would just grow back again. So they finally went in, removed it, and cured her. And I think uh, this is a patient with a very similar <clears throat> history. It's a palm thorn, and uh, these are miserable to look for uh, if they get into the heel area. Uh, but uh, I, I've had the misfortune of operating on a couple of these, and it, it can be really difficult. Um, I did this before we had nice MRI pictures, and, uh, and uh, I used to think that it was an easy job to do this, but it's not. Thanks, John. All right, so looks like we have some low signal foci on that. Is that the medial side, maybe the lateral side of the foot? I don't Yeah, both laterals. Yeah. Um, Kind of similar in appearance, with a lot of soft tissue thickening around. And fluid around it. Yeah. If we go to sagittal images. Oh, uh, yeah, you can see that uh, needle in profile there. Yeah. With the abscess around it. Yeah. Well, what happens uh, is uh, uh, antibiotics decreases the infection, but doesn't eliminate it. Until, the, and until you get that thorn out of there, um, uh, it, it's going to get reinfected. Uh, I think I spoke about this uh, in a knee in a two-year-old uh, way back when. And uh, so you have to search for these and, 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 and take them out. Otherwise, you, you, you can lose a foot, actually. Um, Thank you, John. Robert. All right, so it looks like there's a marker over the plantar aspect of the foot, and then there's a focus of susceptibility artifact with surrounding uh, edema there, which uh, would be concerned for a foreign body again. Yeah, and uh, this is actually a object that uh, the patient stepped on. It's embedded in the subcutaneous tissue, and it has no mobile protons in it, so it's black, and this happened to be glass. Now, as you don't know, that colored glass, <laughs> clear, it, clear glass. You, you, you want, do you see a clear glass on, on MRI, John? Yeah, yeah, you do on MRI, John. Yeah, but no, not on X ray. Yeah, on X rays, if it's leaded, you can see it, but if it's not leaded, you tend not to be able to see it for yeah. with With MR, it doesn't uh, really matter. Yeah, no. You might have a little bit more artifact with leaded glass, but but not. You can always tell it was a beer bottle that did, did it <laughs> on, on, on X-ray. Yeah, good. Okay, Elior. Yeah, so here looking at the anterior distal tibia, it looks like there's quite a bit of edema. This is a young, young patient, pediatric patient. Mm -hmm. See the open spices there. Um, so it looks like a fluid collection involving the metaphysis extending to the epiphysis. I'd be concerned about an abscess. Yeah, so this is a classic Brody's abscess. You like to pick them up much earlier than this, as we talked about before in lectures. Uh, this is usually due to bacteremia, where the bacteria then gets dislodged in one of the small arterioles and the uh, uh, metaphysis near the growth plate. You tend to then develop an abscess on the metaphyseal side. If you allow it long enough, it'll actually 
uh, go through the the uh, the cartilage here, the growth plate cartilage, and can extend into the epiphysis as we're seeing here. So you like to pick these up earlier before this happens. It's almost always staph, uh, <clears throat> uh, but uh, it's still nice if you can get blood culture. So staph or strep. Yeah, and, uh, and, and get an actual organism, especially in this day and age when there are a lot of antibiotic resistant organisms uh, before you treat, so you know you're treating with, a, with the right agent. All right, 48 year old female intermittent left ankle pain, five years. Seeing a focus of uptake uh, laterally on the left ankle there. And I think there's a well, lucency associated with that in the lateral malleolus. Okay. You want an MR scan? Yes. <clears throat> All right, so there is some cortical irregularity anteriorly on that lateral malleolus uh, with underlying edema. Yeah, this is a case from Dr. Su in, <clears throat> in South Korea. And this was an intracortical abscess. Okay. I, I would think, John, that this probably started with some minor injury, like getting kicked in the ankle or something. Uh, John, I'm not sure. The organism has to come from somewhere. <clears throat> well, hematology, uh, hematological uh, yeah. entry that, to the foot, I... I don't know how common that is, but around the ankle is usually some kind of trauma that causes it, I think. Okay. All right. Uh, Robert? Yeah. Okay. Looking at what I think is the second digit, that interphalangeal joint, looks like there's a lot of uh, swelling around that. Um, yeah. So I'd be concerned for an infection. Right in here, the third, right, and this uh, this was osteomyelitis with uh, an infection of that uh, proximal interphalangeal joint. Eliora. Okay, dealt with increasing second MTP pain, rule out Freiburg's infraction. Um, yeah, looking at the second, the head of the second. Uh, head of meta, the, uh, the metatarsal. It looks like there's edema there with surrounding soft tissue edema. Um, the joint space looks it looks intact. Maybe a small effusion. Um, and the sagittals. Hmm. Maybe some erosive change along the head of that. Uh, second metatarsal, so, yeah. Is it Freiburg's infraction? I don't, I don't think so. I think that's too extensive. I... Freiburg is usually the second metatarsal head only. The proximal phalanx is generally not involved. We talked about why this really a subchondral impaction fracture, and uh, uh, uses often associated with wearing high heels or uh, being. Yeah, Freiburg. <laughs> Doesn't produce as much pain as something like this. Yeah, so, and then uh, you generally don't get uh, big effusions, and you typically don't get all this edema in the surrounding soft tissue. So this one, you immediately you should say, "Wow, this doesn't look like Freiburg's." Let's think about something that's uh, yeah, more significant. I, I would think even an X-ray could diagnose this. Uh, I don't have the X-ray for this one. It, it depends on how far along and how much bone destruction you have. Yeah. Maybe, maybe so, because there is some erosive change here. Uh, um, I, think I, see, some, I think I see some. Yeah. But this was infected, and certainly with MR, you can see the extent of the inflammatory disease much better. Okay. No doubt about that. Yeah. 
Uh, see, who did the last one? Ellie Rudy, I think me. All right, so a lot of soft tissue, uh, which looks like it's eroding away at the fifth uh, distal metatarsal there. They got the coronal images, that's what it looks like. See a lot of bony destruction. Is that so? Is that soft tissue thickening of fluid leading to a defect in the plantar yeah. tissue? Probably. That's hard. I would certainly be concerned about this. But this was an infection of the fifth metatarsal phalangeal joint, a big abscess here, and osteomyelitis. Robert. All right, uh, so we have some edema in that uh, talus, uh, also the normal signal there. Uh, yeah, I So we have a low signal on the T1, looks like typical edema. Mm -hmm. So we have a differential uh, trauma, chronic yeah. degenerative disease with edema, uh, infection, and so forth. Uh, and then we can see some fluid collections around it. So there would be a differential if we go to the sagittal images. Uh, here you can see that there's a lot of loss of articular cartilage and uh, the fusion here, a lot of edema within the bone. Not quite a double line sign, but you have to be a little concerned about possible uh, AVM on the differential as well, but this was all infection. This was osteomyelitis and infection within the joint. Elior? Yes, a uh, six-year-old with fever. Um, looking at the distal tibia, um, I'm seeing lifting of the periosteum with yeah. um, subperiosteal fluid yeah. and surrounding soft tissue edema. Um, yeah, and this kind of serpiginous signal in the uh, in the bone. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to have a T1 weighted image to compare with also, which we don't in this particular case. No. Uh, but uh, right, so there's a subperiosteal abscess. Increasing pain, swelling, right heel. Okay, so we have this lucency in the posterior calcaneus with. Sclerotic margins. Okay. And here's a fat down here, and it looks like it's a little dense. Yeah, it looks like there's a little air in the soft tissue there, maybe. Okay. And then here's the MR scan. All right. So, yeah, a lot of destruction of that uh, inferior calcaneus. Yeah. Uh, leading to this. See gas here. Yeah. This was a, this was a draining sinus. So this is gas, probably air from the outside from the sinus tract. And we can see this big abscess within the bone here. In the yeah. mouth. A lot of chronic uh, ebernation here uh, due to the chronic inflammatory reaction to the uh, chronic inflammatory disease within the bone. There we can see all the cortical destruction. And here's the draining sinus coming out here to the skin. And this was a uh, osteo with a large sinus tract and a big abscess. Robert. All right. So we have a 71 year old with heel pain. Uh, can't tell if that's a plantar spur down there, but it looks prominent. Otherwise, I don't know that I see much. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, Why was... do you say it's a spur? Uh, I said I wasn't sure if that's what it was, but uh, it just looks well corticated. Well, it's a, it, some calcium deposit that. But I don't, I don't think that's a spur. Yeah. Here's the MR. That help? Uh, yeah, looks like there's a lot of abnormal signal, a lot of edema, and some signal loss there yeah. on the, uh, yeah. Hmm. I'd be concerned about an abscess, but... Uh, 
some sort of osteomyelitis, but it doesn't look typical for sure. It certainly can be. You have an abscess there. Yeah. Sorry, I shouldn't have. <laughs> you can see the soft tissue edema over here. So let me mm -hmm. just go back here for a second. Couldn't help myself. Yeah, and you can see the, the big uh, lucency here. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would be very concerned about uh, uh, osteomyelitis in a case like this. And this was TB osteomyelitis, tuberculosis. Hello, you are. Okay, 44 year old, ankle pain for several months. Mm. <clears throat> Um, it looks maybe a bit sclerotic in the regions of the subtalar joints there. Yeah, the, the talus and the calcaneus. Um, there are not much fat back here. Here's the MR. <clears throat> yeah, fluid, fluid collection extending posteriorly, I think from the joint space. Um, yeah, edema. lots of it, bone edema. Remove enhancement, peripheral enhancement. So it looks like it could be a big abscess there. Yeah. Genius on the straight PD fat set. You know, see a lot of bone edema and probably subcondylar disease here. Probably a lot of fluid in the tendon sheaths. I'd be worried that these are all infected. And this was also tuberculous arthritis. All right, right ankle pain, two weeks. Looks like in the metaphysis of the tibia, there's a little lucency anteriorly. Okay. That's what the MR looks like. All right, so. Your contrast. Looks like a rhodiasis is going into the epiphysis. Mm -hmm. Maybe even an infected joint. Yeah. And this is another tuberculous osteomyelitis. Korea. Right. Robert. <coughs> this is from Australia. All right. We have a 27 year old female Asian travel ankle pain and swelling. Uh, hmm. I don't know that I necessarily see a whole lot on these radiographs, but uh, yeah, MRI <clears throat> looks like there's a large joint diffusion with some synovial thickening and synovitis. Um, yeah, some more of the same. Yeah, maybe fluid collection there. Here it looks like there's just a lot of more phlegmon type thing here. Yeah, it has a lot of internal sigma intensity within it. So they biopsied this, and this was uh, atypical mycobacterial disease. And this was all just granulomatous synovitis. I had no abscess. Eliora. 66 year old with HIV. Uh, yeah, radiographs and CTs, we see lucency. In the medial malleolus, um, bony destruction, yeah, the midfoot bones, destruction of the, the uh, joint spaces, um, yeah, lots of focal lucencies in the bones. This is all, all over the place. Not, not as painful as you would expect in this case, and this was another case of atypical mycobacterial infection. Okay. All right, so we have a lot of destruction of the anterior calcaneus and uh, subtalar joint, a lot of uh, synovial thickening. Yeah, this guy might have sinus tracy syndrome. <laughs> yeah, we got to put it on the impression. Yeah, got a lot of synovial distension. Okay. 
So they chew away the nerves, and so you, they don't have this much pain. Otherwise, they'd be screaming with pain. Yeah. And they don't produce all that swelling that the bacterial, normal bacterial, uh, like staph or strep, which is extremely painful. Right. Uh, so, there go people kind of ignore it, and uh, by the time they see a doctor, uh, it's all, it's almost like uh, too late. But uh, at least you save my leg. This is a patient who is in a prison in the desert of California. So um, this could be TB or coccidio. Right. So this is coccidiomycosis. Okay, Robert. So you would have had that uh, this disease if he wasn't in prison, John. What did you say, John? Uh, he wouldn't have had the disease if he wasn't in prison. So it's, we should let all the prisoners out. Good idea. Good idea. We'll yeah, all go well, to that's Santa what we Monica. have in California. We'll have them all go to Santa we'll Catch them and release them. <laughs> okay, uh, Eliora. Uh, <clears throat> ankle pain and AIDS patient. Um, yeah, we're seeing multiple lesions in the bone. Looks like increased signal, um, very serpiginous signal. Hmm. Just everywhere in the bone. I mean, could this be AVN? Okay. Um, could, be AVN. could be double line sign, but actually, <clears throat> this isn't the. I don't see a double line sign, do you, John? No, not really. It's it's serpiginous like a double line sign, but we don't really see a sharp low and high signal intensity line. I think we've seen it before. We'll 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 talk about AVN no, uh, lectures as well. If they're going to Anyways, biopsy so. this, uh, um, Robert, uh, how many how many gloves would you put on? <laughs> yeah, but uh, the the problem is the double line sign is if it's really chronic disease, you lose. That uh, that double line sign, and and this was uh, uh, so this this could actually be very chronic uh, uh, infarcts, and you know it doesn't really look like a typical infection because uh, you know this doesn't look like an abscess in the center, and we don't see the the edema as this very funny peripheral uh, appearance. Uh, and this does look a little bit like AVN in the sense that it's 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 kind of irregular and it is associated with the subchondral bone, which which they they can be. Anyway, this is main patient, and it turned out in this particular patient he did not have an infection, and these were all uh, bone infarcts from vascular disease. Uh, from what? I don't remember, John. I should remember, but I don't. I should have put it on the on the slide, but I didn't. All right. So our bone scan here looks like some foci asymmetric uptake in the right clavicle and the left tibia. Okay. And all over the skull. Yeah, this is the kind of in the skull here. Uh, fortunately, this is not a disease we see that frequently anymore, but <clears throat> we may going forward. <clears throat> uh, it's, this is a disease that likes every part of the body, but really does like the bones, and these scattered areas of uh, inflammatory involvement are pretty typical of this particular disease. Okay. Here's the MR scan. So it looks like diffuse medullary edema in the right tibia. There might be some cortical regularity, yeah. A little cortical involvement here with a little bit of a soft tissue. Periosteal thickening here, maybe a little peri subperiosteal abscess, inflammation within the bone. And this is syphilis. Okay. Robert. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is 
But uh, John, did you have a great? Uh, can we go back to that? What what great syphilis would this be? Looks uh. Uh, yeah. I don't know what the grading is. It looks well, disseminated. I would put this in a, a grade three because it's already in bone. Grade two just affects the skin, and you see patches of uh, dermat dermat. Titus, uh, which is fairly uh, uh, diagnostic for dermatologists, not for orthopedic surgeons, but um, this is tertiary, so uh, the brain might be already affected also. Um, yeah. Thanks, John. Yeah. All right, so we have persistent post-operative pain. Uh, there's a lot of irregular signal throughout the bones, uh, a lot of destructive change as well, um, a fusion and fluid collections. Yeah, it looks like some hardware has been removed. Uh, so it'd be concerned for a post-op infection. Uh, that's a post-fracture. Yeah, so this was a fracture they put in Internal fixation, it got infected. They had to remove it and treat the infection and then hope to go in and salvage something after the infection is completely treated. Uh, and that's what we call iatrogenic infection. Yeah, right. Elio? <clears throat> Yeah, so in this um uh, in the soft tissues in the heel pad there is yeah, the subcutaneous uh lesion looks like fluid. Yeah. On so the PD a, fats. A, yeah. It's a subcutaneous yeah. abscess. Okay. okay. All right, we got something going on. These medial soft tissues underlying the marker. Uh, a lot of subcutaneous skin thickening. Uh, are these our tendons next door? Yeah, a little subcutaneous abscess. Yeah, well, you can see that there's been surgery here. Yeah. And this is actually a post-op infection where the, the surgical hardware was actually infected and this is an abscess coming out from the area of metal artifact, which... Not an uncommon area. Yeah. That's a pretty common area for infection. That's why yours truly didn't do any of these. Yeah. Okay, Robert. All right, so we have a 76-year-old with calf pain and swelling rule-out DVT. Uh, looks like there's a compressible uh, fluid collection with maybe some septation in there. Yeah. No, no vascular flow, so maybe a hematoma or cyst. Okay. So they had a hematoma. Or infection. Yeah. Or infection, yeah. So they thought that it was a hematoma. They put in drainage. We can see that there's some air that got into the to the drainage area. This is what it looks like on MR, 129-2010. And this turned out to be a post-drainage abscess. So they <clears throat> they drained it, but then the, the drainage got infected. So it's probably not infected on that ultrasound, but then got infected after they started treating it. Uh, Robert, what what do you think an orthopedic surgeon does after he drains something like this? Uh, or before, or before actually, before he drains it, uh, take some uh, samples for lab. Admit to medicine. Well, the first thing he does is calls an infectious disease doctor. Yeah. Yep.
Okay, 53-year-old female, two prior Achilles surgeries and redness. Um, yeah, so it looks like there's um, susceptibility artifact in the posterior soft tissues. I mean, that could be surgical material. Um, <clears throat> I don't think there's infection. Well... It looks like there's a defect in the native Achilles tendon. Um, yeah, there's a surgical screw there in the calcaneus, maybe from a flexor alsus longus transfer. Um, some edema in that calcaneus, but... Um, okay, here, post-contrast imaging, there's a ringed... Enhanced fluid collection posteriorly, yeah. where the tendon should be. Yeah, so that was all infected, and this is a big abscess there, right? Mm. Increasing big toe pain, swelling two years. Nail pitting. Nail pitting. So it looks like this. Uh, Food sensitive sequence on the right. There's a lot of edema in the. This is what I love is when you get an MR scan looking for the great toe and the nail pitting, and the distal phalanx has cut off the image. That, yeah. That's my favorite. But go ahead. But yeah, edema diffusely in that uh, distal phalanx. There's an MTP effusion too. Uh, not a lot of changes on the. T1, <clears throat> but I think, yeah, a lot of fluid surrounding that IP joint, and then a lot of effusion, a lot of edema in the distal phalanx. Yeah. So with pitting, what do you think this might be? Uh, some kind of sub- That's a common infection, infection of the nails. A fungal infection? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a kind of rancid fungal sub, infection of the nail. Subungal. Sub yeah. I'm surprised that, that, that that's a painful area. Yeah. Uh, but the fungus eats away those nerves, like I said. Yeah. Uh, well, fungal disease of the nails is pretty common. And if you go into CVS, you'll have a whole row of more, more common in hands, fungal, actually. Fungal nails. What? More common it's than more hands. common in hands. Oh, okay. Uh, Robert? All right, so we have a slowly growing ma foot mass for two years. And it does look like there's some soft tissue thickening and probably a mass, uh, kind of plantar aspect of the foot, some low signal in there. Right. Heterogeneous appearance. Yeah, but it, it's uh, so these are this is actually T1 and this is actually a T2, but it doesn't look like it. I don't know. This is these are all T1s and a T2 is here. Here's a T2. This was back in the days before we had fat suppression. Mm -hmm. uh, and this turned out to be actinomycosis. And there was actually a draining sinus. This marker was right over the draining sinus. And there was a little sulfur granule right about here. Uh, uh, when we did this patient. So this is actinomycosis without a lot of edema and these funny low signal structures within it. But this is the only actinomycosis that I know of that I've seen. Okay, here patient stepped on a nail three weeks ago. <clears throat> um... Yeah, in the medial posterior soft tissues there. I've, I've never seen a signal like this, just this circular. Well, we had a painter to paint a picture. <laughs> yeah, um, look at these yeah. little, little, look like little bullseyes all through this. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if that's, I mean, is this something that was, placed um yeah, no actually not this was all due to the infection and this is this is a fairly characteristic of fungal infections that i don't i've never 
I'm sure it happens. It happens probably with ectonomycosis and some of the atypical bacterial diseases, but I've never seen this or heard of this in a regular bacterial infection, but it's pretty characteristic of fungal infections. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know if I believe that three weeks. Uh, I would think that it's been longer than that. Well, that's the history we had. The history is inaccurate. We rarely get accurate history, it turns out. We, we could say that I, I, not very common, but I actually, it's extremely rare that we get good, accurate history. No. We're ready out. Probably more like, probably more like three months plus. Well, that was the history, and this comes under the rubric really of the Madura foot. Uh, these these typically tend to be chronic. They tend to occur in uh, tropical areas where there's a lot of moisture around. Uh, usually, it's due to uh, uh, fungal infections, but you can have other atypical bacterial infections like uh, ectonomycosis, which can do this as well. Uh, Seventy percent of these are in the foot because it's probably planted on the ground. Tend to be in people who often are barefoot. <clears throat> uh, and this dot and circle is a characteristic sign that you can see in Madura foot. And uh, it could cause marked deformities. Uh, as John was saying before, these these are somewhat painful, but not like if you have an acute uh, bacterial infection. And so they, they tend to be chronic, especially in areas where there's poor medical care and a, a poor indigenous population. You get a lot of deformities, as we see here. Typical, uh, that patient actually had prior surgery for Madura foot. We tend to get these skin ulcers associated with it. Very chronic uh, disease. This all looks very chronic with a, an extensive, and then here this patient's had a prior amputation, but still has marked infection in the soft tissues and bones there. So this is what Madura foot looks like. And if you take a photograph of it, this is what it looks like. So these are very deforming uh, lesions that can lead to marked loss of function. And these are probably due to fungal balls, uh, what the way in which the fung fungi will mass together in the infected stage. And that's why these little circles or spheres are typical of fungal disease and are considered uh, a pretty, pretty good marker of uh, the Madura foot. So why don't we stop here and we'll continue looking at other infections and inflammatory disease uh, today is uh, yeah, later this week, Thursday. Okay. Thanks. Have a good couple of days, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Take care, John. Thanks, John.